Trip Live Radio Friday. You hear the sultry beats. That can only mean one thing. It is time to uh, let the studio look as good as it has looked all week. We have the beautiful Caden Cross uh, in studio. She's at Blush all weekend long, 9th Street downtown. Everybody ends up at Blush. And uh, Caden was telling me this is Pittsburgh is like the f- they love you here. This is like the, f- the favorite city for you. Yeah, I, I keep coming back. I have never been to uh, to a city as much as I've been to Pittsburgh for featuring. Well, I can only imagine what they like about you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, glad to have you here. Um, make sure you see her at Blush again tonight and uh, Saturday night. Uh, Kaden underscore Cross on Twitter. You can check out her website, which there's tons of content, new content. You said. Yeah, I just started uh, putting up exclusive scenes because I was in contract with uh, with Vivid, then Adam and Eve, then Digital Playground, and then this past year I've kind of been able to control my own. Content for the first time, so putting new fun stuff up on the website, and that's clubcaden dot com. Uh, com. Now that's that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty powerful thing to be able to control your own material. That's uh, you know I. Uh when I went out on my own, I was a little, uh, a little, you know, I've, I've been in contract for all this time. I was kind of afraid to be independent, um, and I didn't want to be for hire to other studios. So there was a big jump off the cliff feeling, but it's really working out. What? Uh uh, how scared are you making that gamble? I mean, because like you said, that could be a, that could be well, a jumping I, off a cliff there. It's like, you know, if you're you're in a job where you're used to getting a salary, you know, you get that paycheck no matter what, as long as you're doing the job that you're contracted to do. Um, and then going out on your own, you don't know. Can you, it, it costs money to create content. Sure. And in this market with everyone pirating the content, you, you always wonder, can you make the money back mm. and then profit on top of that? So that's a that's a big gamble these days, and uh, I took it. <laughs> You're no dummy, and I, I knew this a little bit. I got to read and find out about you. I, I could sense that you had a good head on your shoulders and had a, a good brain there. Uh, and now, just in two minutes, you you. you seem like you have a lot more potential past what you're doing now, what you could do in this business. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, uh, in terms of like a businesswoman, though, it, with, with, uh, this is like the first step, you know, being able to take this kind of independent um, gamble. What, what's what's the future? What do you want to do? Uh, what I really want to do is create that uh, that sort of marriage of, of the two styles of content, mm. um, because there's gonzo and there's features, okay. and I've always done features, and they tend to have the better lighting, the better looking girls, the the dialogue, the storyline, the big box covers, the big promotion, mm. and then you get to the actual product, the the sex, and it's sort of flat. Yeah. Because it's a big, you know, red camera, and you can't move them, so they're on a tri- tripod, and they're wide angle, and it's just sort of, it's there, but it's not as, as hot as it could be, and mm. then, so that's where the other style comes in, which is, which is the gonzo, where you have the little maneuverable cameras, and you can get those angles and get exactly the shot that's there, and it's organic, and it's real feeling. Um, and, and that's what I've always wanted to do is bring that sort of quality of sex to a, a better storyline. Okay. Um, and I, I actually just uh, was able to co-direct my first one that was exactly that with Manuel Ferrara, my fiance. And I'm super happy with how it came out where we just got the trailer back and I'm just like smiling ear to ear because it looks it looks like a French film. <laughs> and then suddenly the trailer goes to like the hardest core <laughs> content. Like it, it just comes out of nowhere. What's directing like? Um, compared exhausting. To being, compared to being a performer. Exhausting. More exhausting than being a performer. Way more. Really? As a performer and especially as a, as a performer for features, my day consisted of they'd always call you to, to the makeup charity at 8 a.m. So, of course, you're up at 6 because you have to drive and mm. shower and do all that stuff. And, you know, you'd be in makeup for an hour, hour and a half, and then you'd come out, and you were like, okay, I'm ready, and they put clothes on you, and they'd say, okay, wait for pictures, and then five hours would go by, <laughs> and i go sleep. <laughs> and that was, um, they, they were long days, but they were long days where I just kind of played on my phone and slept and read a book. It wasn't, right. it wasn't hard work. I was just stuck in one place. Directing, uh, I'll, I'll do the same sort of call time, but again, I'm up at 6 a.m. because it's not about me showering and doing all that stuff. It's about me making sure the wardrobe's laid out for the other girls and everyone has directions and checking on tests and checking on this and that and the other. And it's just go, 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 go until you wrap and you're constantly looking at the clock because they charge by the hour for the location Mm. and you're just trying to get every little shot and of course the lighting has to be perfect and there's the issue of continuity and all this other stuff. So just worrying about everything else, you know? Everything. everything Like, because in adult, you don't just direct. It's not like that's your job and you have someone for each job. You're, you're, the script supervisor, you're the director, you're the production manager, you're the, your art and wardrobe and lighting and camera, you're doing it all. So aside from being beautiful and blonde, how the hell did you get into porn? Um, I was a, I was just a little house dancer. 
uh, a, a, an I think that's always how it starts, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's how it starts. It's the gateway drug. <laughs> yeah, someone, uh, an agent came in and he actually got me modeling. Um, he, he had me do my first shoot for Penthouse. And then from there, some other offers came in. And then I was like, you know what? This is actually kind of a cool, uh, cool alternative to real work. <laughs> now, I, and I, we all love, we all love our, our our regular house dancers and our, and our girls that, that make the world go around. How did you get to that? How did you get to the gateway drug? I don't even, that, that's surprising to me. Oh, that, uh, it, I had just turned 18 mm. and, um, over the summer I, I was, uh, I was in community college and I had just finished my first year of community college. And over the summer I'd picked up a second job as a trail guide for this little like dude ranch. And okay. I would take people on horses around the lake. Okay. And, uh, this start, this, now this makes sense. This is what I was picturing. Yeah, this goes back to this like wholesome beginning. College, <laughs> College nature, kids. Working two jobs, you know, just struggling to make it. And let's let's see where we veered. <laughs> and then we veer. Um, and basically, there there was this little uh, this little pony I sort of fell in love with that they brought into the ranch. <laughs> but the pony talking into he, it. He was wild. He was like this crazy pony. And so they, they had me riding him because I was little compared to the bigger the bigger guys who worked on the ranch, and okay. he was little. And so they had me riding him to sort of. Um, get him a little more safe for customers and when the summer ended I quit the job because I had to go back to school and I couldn't do two jobs and uh, I, I remember I had my birthday and like that same week someone who still worked there called me and she's like they're gonna they're gonna send your pony to the slaughter auction and I started crying. I'm like, no, you can't send my pony to the slaughter auction. And basically what happened was oh, I see after I left, a very big guy decided he was going to break the pony. And uh, the pony ended up getting hurt. And it was one of those things where the vet bills cost more than he was worth and as meat, uh, you know, and a bag of dog food. And so they were going to send him to slaughter. Oh. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like making $8 an hour and I'm like crying. And I had a male roommate, of course. And he's like, oh, you could just go to the strip club. <laughs> and I'm like, I could just go to the strip club. I'm 18 now. So, so I did. Somebody praise that <laughs> pony. That is the most, f that's the, that's, that is the greatest story we will ever have. <laughs> Nobody will ever have a better story as to how. Right, so if, if if you had not encountered the pony, what would you be doing with life? What, what were you studying? Well, God, I was studying psychology, and I continued. I actually stayed in college um, for you. a number of years after. I was studying psychology, but it was one of those things where I was a psych major because I had to pick a major. Sure. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Nothing was interesting. It's to always me. psych or business. Yeah, <laughs> and business things. was not interesting at the time. Now I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. Yeah. But back then, you know, I was, you know, just <laughs> I wanted to party and ride horses. Oh. <laughs> that's the most tremendous story ever. That's, that's a good. It's a good story. I love animals too. It's a. It's a. It's a good story. I didn't expect that one. Uh, at Caden underscore cross, you can follow her on Twitter. Uh, www.clubcaden.com uh, is where you can check out her new exclusive content on her website. All right, so you get into the business. Obviously, things took off. What? So tell me this. I know you've had a lot of success, and, I, and I've seen some of your work. What makes, what is it, why, how, why is Caden Cross so successful? What, what has made you stand out from another blonde in the industry, so to speak? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a mix of, I, I think, I don't want to say prudence. It's a terrible word for, for adult. I'm not prudent. <laughs> but um, it, it's a mix of, I, I was in, I came in at a time when you could still get a contract. Mm -hmm. And it's important if you want to get to any sort of level in adult, I think, to, to have some sort of thing that doesn't have you working every day because your body will not hold up long enough for your name to, to rise to that level. Um, so being in contract helped me because I was only doing two scenes a month. I was always doing them. Like I was doing most of my scenes with my today fiance. Mm. Like it was very, um, very easy. How'd work. that work? How'd this, well, if you brought <laughs> he was up. my first scene. He was my very first scene in adult. And then, uh, then we it's like marrying the we guy just had this it's great like marrying chemistry. the guy who broke your virginity to right him. yeah we just <laughs> had chemistry and I, I requested him for all my movies and so he was always like one of my two scenes especially towards the end huh. um and so so doing the two scenes and working with people i wanted to work with and only doing what i wanted to do when i wanted to do it that really made it easy to stay in because it was enjoyable it won't wear your body down yeah. you, you, there, there's not that um I think what a lot of girls deal with is they come in and they want to impress everybody and they go way overboard and do the craziest, raunchiest stuff. Mm. And then everyone's like, oh my God, look at this star. She's amazing. And then six months later, she's so burnt out. There's nothing else to do, yeah. There's nothing else to do. You can't be any more shocking yeah. than you've already been. And, and your body is just like, you know what? I'm done. And so uh, being able to just take it slow and what's, be vanilla worked for me. <laughs> what's the next shocking thing that you could do? 
that I could do? Yeah. Oh, there's plenty I could do. <laughs> oh, great. Well, it's <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty I could do. Start making a list. Yeah, I actually, uh, I just released, I, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not, but on my Innuendos website. windows are good. Okay. I just released my first point of view um, backdoor, backdoor there we go. scene. I okay. did it with, uh, with, with Manuel. Um, and that's seven years in. What's, can I ask you this? So uh, that's pretty, what's the, what's the divide of working with your fiance and your personal life, private sex? Like, is it, now? Yeah. Like a I, camera. It just, we literally, that's all. Like, I'll, I'll wake up. I'm like, I need content. <laughs> Get your camera. And then it's like on our bed in our room. Nice. Yeah. Is that, I mean, is that a, are there a lot of people that marry within the business or is yeah. that kind of a, okay. yeah, it's pretty common. It's, it's like, it's like any industry, you know, yeah. you, you run into the same people. They have obviously common interests to right. end up there. Can relate to each other. Yeah. It, it's, I think very important in adult to have someone who has some experience there just because you come home. Like, I, I think if you were with an, just an everyday person who wasn't, didn't have experience with adult, he couldn't come home and be like, so this girl I was having sex yeah. with today, I got to talk about this. <laughs> like he couldn't great, great do that. Time chats. I, yeah. But, <laughs> and it actually, even once we got together, it took him a while to, to become comfortable enough to know that I'm not going to jump down his throat if sure. he needs to talk about something that happened in a scene. <laughs> I'm going to imagine the answer is no, but I got to ask. Is there any, does, there can't be any jealousy there. I mean, obviously he Oh, there's with, tons. Are you kidding? Really? Oh my God. Really? Oh my you God. You get jealous when I he's... think the most jealous guy I've ever dated is Manuel. Are you, uh, there, there, uh, there do are you get jealous of him? Yes. Yeah, so, oh, okay, big time. Wow. Big time. But, um, but there's also the understanding, like the, the jealousy tends to happen outside of scenes. Like I'll be walking with him uh, somewhere and someone will look at me and he'll turn around and like puff his chest out and be uh, like, what's this? And I'm like, what are you talking? It's like a <laughs> five-year-old boy. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Manuel, leave the radio host alone. <laughs> she was sitting next to me. I couldn't help it. Um, that's that's wild. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I I would think there'd be jealousy, but then I thought maybe no because you guys are that's just there, that's just I, the life. I think um, I think if there is any sort of emotion, there's jealousy. All right, fair enough. You want to protect it. Hey, I, that's that means you care, I guess. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. Let's do a little uh, get to know your uh, porn star. Worst pickup line you've ever had used on you. I can't say it. Uh, I can't curse. Well, just can you just f word or? I was I was in Miami and uh, and I was walking past a bus bench and there was a homeless guy and he had like your stereotypical brown bag and you know like the the dreaded beard lock mm -hmm. and all that and and he turned to me and he's want like wanna yeah yeah and I'm like wanna bang wanna yeah, bang yeah, yeah wanna bang okay. and he was he was so straight up about it I was like you know what that is a really honest approach hey points thank for you honesty. all right best <laughs> pickup line ever used what did Manuel use on you besides hey we gotta go to work oh god you know what Manuel used uh actually he it, 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 I was already so into him by the time we we started dating well, like a past he sent guy. me a DM on Twitter I, I was in France and he sent me a DM he's like come over well hey <laughs> more never... honesty <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> all right age you lost your virginity 15 okay iPhone or Android iPhone. Very fine. Best vacation spot. Um, God, what is the best vacation spot? I did a road trip across East, Eastern Europe. Okay. I think I think that was really cool. Pet peeve. Well, I have so many of them. Um, pet peeves right now. I'm really, really, really irritated by people who keep turning the conversations back to themselves. I'm really noticing that a lot lately. <laughs> we could talk about you all day. I won't. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I, I need that. <laughs> you are much more interesting than I am, I can guarantee. Um, well, I don't, you might balk on this one. Most famous person you've ever had sex with. I have to balk on that okay. one. <laughs> I figured that would happen. All right. Uh, screw, marry, and kill. Charlie Sheen, Howard Stern, and Kanye West. Who do you screw? Who do you marry? Who do you kill? Oh, God. Did I just kill all of them? <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know what? I actually, I think I would marry Howard Stern. Nice. And the reason is he would always be interesting. Like, you can come home at the end of the day, and you're not like, oh, God, I'm so bored at home. What's it say when Howard Stern's your most stable option there? Right. Three? <laughs> God, I, I, don't think I, could, I don't think I could have sex with Kanye, because it would be all about him. Pet peeve, obviously. Yeah. No, I, I'd have, to, I'd have to screw Charlie Sheen. Yeah. So I guess Kanye's dead. All right. Poor guy. Well, that's kind of what I was hoping for there. Anyway. Yeah, it probably goes that way a lot, huh? Yeah. Well, I, that's actually you. Actually, the first. You Is that know, the first combination you've. That's the first time you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're the first. Well, I'll try to get. I'm sure we'll have some pretty steady numbers. <laughs> I'll give you a percentage uh, chart here by the end of the year. Uh, at Caden underscore cross. See her blush tonight and tomorrow. Uh, blush Night Street downtown. Sen tell them that we sent you. Uh, you can also check out her website, which actually said uh, very valuable. If you think just past the exciting content, valuable to uh, to her success and her career branching out 
clubcaden.com and uh, DVDs and stuff at the club tonight? You know, I think I sold out of DVDs last night. Oh, never mind. You know what I'm going to have, though, are amazing lap dances uh-huh. and amazing 8x10s and amazing fleshlights. I'm a, oh, you got to push I was the fleshlight. Say the fleshlight. <laughs> actually, before, sorry, Mike, before we stop this, i got to... So, Explain the fleshlight thing. I, we, I, I will we actually, explain the fleshlight. We, we've had several girls on here that I know have their own, that endorse their own uh, fleshlight, but we've actually never got into it for one reason or another. Okay, know. I'm going to tell you about it. A okay. fleshlight is called that because it is literally shaped like a very large like camping flashlight. Mm-hmm. And it's filled with this realistic uh, fleshlight, flesh-like um, sort of latex material. Right. Very cleanly and uh, <laughs> easy to, to keep clean. Uh, and works well with lube, and basically it's molded to look like the girl who mm. who is uh, on the box of it's it. It's the most honest simulation of you. It's the most honest simulation, and apparently, like the best men's sex toy, Manuel even. And every time I leave town, he's like, "Leave your flashlight." <laughs> He really, he actually was doing a scene once. It was a live scene, and this was before he knew anything about flashlights. And they had sent a couple samples, um, and they said, can you please have the guy use this in the scene? And he had two girls there. And he got really mad. He's like, I'm not using that. I mean, it's crap. And, uh, and they put it out, and the director's like, no, you have to use it. They're sponsoring our show. And so he pulls it out, and he's like, he does this, uh, he looks at it, and then he's like, ugh, and he like starts using it. And he literally made the girls kiss for like 15 minutes. He just used the flashlight. <laughs> If you're not if you're not watching if you're not watching this reenactment, this is why you should be watching a live web stream or subscribing to the Trip Live Radio YouTube page. I just got Caden Cross to, uh, well, you know, to, to reenact uh, uh, her her fiance's uh, masturbation habit. So hey, it's been a win all day long. Uh, Caden Cross tonight, tomorrow, blush, Night Street downtown. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell them we sent you, and enjoy Double K.